This is the First Nation of Amjanong's burial ground. These people have been here for hundreds of years, and about 70 years ago, they got some great new neighbors. This is the Chemical Valley. The first thing you notice when you visit Sarnia, Ontario, is the smell. Imagine a mixture of gasoline, melting asphalt, and a trace of rotten egg, smacking you in the face and crawling up your nose every time you breathe. It's a cocktail that made me unpleasantly high and dizzy. That smell is the Chemical Valley, where 40% of Canada's petrochemical industry is located in a 25 kilometers squared area. The Chemical Valley is responsible for the production of gasoline, plastics, pesticides, fertilizers, cosmetics, and a whole bunch of other chemicals that our society relies on. It's estimated that in 2013 alone, the Canadian petrochemical industry will generate $24 billion in sales. Two years ago, thanks to the 60 petrochemical plants and oil refineries that operate in the Chemical Valley 24-7, the World Health Organization gave Sarnia the title of the worst air in all of Canada. To make matters worse, a First Nations reserve called Amjanong, where just under a thousand people live, shares a fence line with the Chemical Valley. This is a serious health concern for the people of Amjanong, as their community has consistently claimed to have higher cancer and miscarriage rates than the national average. And yet the government has not launched a proper health study to investigate their allegations. First Nations in Sarnia, Ontario. Tensions between the First Nations community of Canada, the government, and the petrochemical industry have been running high for a very long time. Regular participation in highway blockades and protests are the norm for many First Nations communities in Canada who are pushing back against environmental damage to their native land. You're fucking cowards! What happened is that Anthony W. George was killed. His relatives insist he was a peaceful man. One of the major issues that the residents of Amjanong need to deal with are chemical leaks from the plants themselves. Oftentimes, these leaks go unreported. And in the first half of 2013 alone, there were three spills of hydrogen sulfide. One of them sent several small children from Amjanong's daycare to the hospital. Once we heard about Amjanong's struggle, we knew we had to go visit the Chemical Valley ourselves to try and get a better sense of how the relationship between the First Nations and the petrochemical industry is being handled what's being done to ensure the safety of the people of Amjanong, and what the future of the Chemical Valley holds. We visited Sarnia while a high-profile energy conference was being held. Political leaders and energy executives had converged on the city to discuss how more money could be squeezed out of Canada's most valuable resource, our oil. As you might imagine, the people of Amjanong were not happy to hear that more industry would be coming their way. Clean water, clean air, healthy families! No more no more chemicals in the valley! While the protesters demonstrated outside of the conference, the energy industry discussed a plan to build new oil pipelines all across Canada. In response, Vanessa Gray, a 20-year-old activist from Amjanong, was there to cause a disruption. I have the right to clean air and fresh water. If you guys feel that money is more important than having water, then there's something really fucked up here. Thank you. When you were on stage, there were probably about six different people that came up to you who were trying to get you off stage. You didn't say a word to any of them. Is that a difficult thing to do, just sort of keeping a stone face? Yeah, I mean, this lady came up to me and said that I was taking her right away to enjoy the conference in peace. How did you feel about that? I feel that she's taking my right away to breathe air and drink water. After chatting with Vanessa outside of the energy conference, we figured we should go meet up with her in a less stressful setting. That didn't exactly happen. She brought us to a site in the valley, right by Amjanong, called the Blue Water Plaque. It commemorates a middle-class white community who was evacuated from the area because of the unsafe living conditions that Amjanong's residents still live with. You're getting involved in these very important, big issues at a really young age. Like, what was it that first sort of 
drove you to try and make a difference? I've just been affected by cancer and my family and friends and loved ones so much. And I would like to see Chemical Valley exposed more than it is now. I'd like some more health studies to be done. People all over can see how fucked up the situation is because it's something that a lot of people don't understand and they don't see every day. We went over to the reserve's well-kept baseball diamond that sits directly across from a massive refinery to speak with Christine Rogers. Christine is a mother of three daughters who were affected by Shell's hydrogen sulfide leak in January of 2013, a leak that was discovered by the staff of Amgenong's daycare center and the children they were caring for after they all noticed a rotten egg smell in the air. Several children were sent to hospital as a result, and because Shell did not properly alert the community, the kids were wrongfully diagnosed for having colds or flus when really they were suffering from hydrogen sulfide exposure. Do you feel like a failure? As Why? a parent, you do everything you can to protect your children. You do everything that you can to make sure that your children are safe. And when something like that happens, it's beyond your control and you just, you feel like you've lost control. What if it had been a bigger spill? You think you're prepared, but really you're not. And I, I don't, Honestly, it feels helpless. She had gotten uh, the crusted eyes at that time, and her eyes were bloodshot for three days, and I had to take her to the doctor and make sure she was, there were no infections. And how do you think these industries need to step up and help this from not happening? If you want to operate here, then you should have top of the line technology. You should be putting safety above your dollars. It's going to cost too much. It's going to cost too much. That's what you hear all the time, and I don't care. I don't care how much it costs you. That's my child's safety. They would do it. Their kids lived right here. There's a funny saying that my kids, they came up with, you see the smoke coming out over there. Yeah. Yeah, they used to think that those were cloud makers. <laughs> That's I had to cute, tell, also... tell her, no, no, that, that's, not, that's not a cloud, that's pollution, that's bad stuff that we're breathing in. So they came up with their own saying, the more clouds in the sky, the more people will die. As a parent, that is heartbreaking that my kids think about the, where they live like that. I'm here outside of the Shell oil refinery, which is one of the largest refineries in the Chemical Valley. The air fucking smells like gas. And this plant alone has been responsible for three different weeks of hydrogen sulfide in the past five months since the beginning of 2013. And if you're not already familiar with hydrogen sulfide, it was actually used as a chemical weapon by the British in World War I. So you know it's really good for you. When oil was first discovered near Sarnia in the mid-1800s, mass industrialization was not far away. To support the war effort, in the early 1940s, Sarnia became a major center for the petrochemical industry. And from there, business began to boom. Sarnia's proximity to the United States quickly made it an exporting hotspot for Canadian petrochemicals. And to meet the demand, companies were quick to buy up land from the people of Amgenong, back when the concept of environmental impact didn't really exist. Then, during the 60s and 70s, Sarnia prospered as the industry exploded with business. All of a sudden, the Chemical Valley was being heralded as a wonderfully exciting development. Because of this, no one should be under any illusion when it comes to the existence of the Chemical Valley. We asked for it. The operation of our society relies on petrochemicals. This is an issue that all of us are responsible for. I went to speak with Mayor Mike Bradley, who has been running Sarnia for over 25 years to discuss the history of the Chemical Valley, what can be done to improve its emissions, and the industry's impact on the people of Amgenong and Sarnia at large. It doesn't matter where you go in, in North America, you will find toxins and other things. The question always in this community and anyone that has a, an industrial complex is, what does the cluster do? Uh, Health Canada came to the community and said, 
we're willing to do this health study and it's going to cost millions and then within a very short period of time they remove themselves from the process and so that's been the issue of how can you fund it because it is not an inexpensive process to make it credible uh, I don't believe the study should have any money from industry and yet it is going to be funded in part by industry. What do you think the valid reasons, if any, are for Am Janong to mistrust government or industry? I mean, the first oil company came here over 100 years ago. But what really accelerated the industry was they needed to be on the water during the Second World War. So the big plant, Polystar, came here, located here, that made rubber. Then all the other plants grew around it. Well, the natural place to go to was the, uh, where the Am Janong Reserve was. So over the years, it's been eroded by industry and, and I understand by the city and others just taking it away. History hasn't been fair to the Amstel. There's no question of that. But what I've been trying to do is make sure that this generation's life will be better by doing what we can to make sure that that relationship is more stable than it's been in the past. You would not do this today. You would not locate industry close to a city. You would not locate industry on reserve lands uh, in the way it was done 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. We heard a lot about a scientist named Jim Brophy, who used to work very closely with Am Janong and the workplace victims of Chemical Valley, who have developed serious health conditions from their jobs in the plants. Jim has since been chased out of Sarnia and now lives in Windsor. We went to visit Jim to discuss what the Canadian government and the petrochemical industry need to do to protect the people of Am Janong and the blue-collar workforce of the Chemical Valley itself. All right, I'm here with Dr. Jim Brophy here in Windsor, and across the river there, we've got a three-story tall, one city block long pile of petroleum coke. Can you maybe explain what that is? That's the end stage of refinery process. Uh, and in that particular case, that's uh, bitumen tar sands crude. Yes, so that's coming out from Alberta. And it's going to a large refinery, Marathon Refinery in Southwest Detroit. Southwest Detroit and Sarnia Amgenong are classic examples of environmental racism. Uh, the whole environmental justice movement is, was in response to these types of egregious, really criminal situations where poor communities find their neighbors are these you know, large industrial complexes and there's little or no protection yeah. from the kinds of exposures that these people get. So let's remember, who is the highest populations at risk? It's First Nations communities on the fence line. It's blue collar industrial workers. It's the poor uh, working class and poor people who live in South Sarnia, not the CEOs. And it's the same in Southwest Detroit, right across from Marathon. It's the poorest people in the city. 